How's it going, everybody? My name is Infamous Isaac, and I'm here with the final part of Seven Deadly Sons. Seven Deadly Sons, Season 4, Dragon's Judgment, right? And, oh man, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> this was a doozy. The, the, this one was tough, honestly. Like, I didn't mean that in a bad way. It was hard to get to because it was emotional, like, jeez. But, I definitely have my opinions on it. And man, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of opinions. But overall, I can say this right now, with the most certainty, that this season, by far, was the... Story-wise, was the best season. Like, from start to finish, it went strong. With the story, it was crazy. Animation-wise, I mean, you already know, the first two seasons are unmatched. But, like, overall, honestly, I think this season was the best season. Like, it, it took me a little bit to decide on whether I, I thought it was. Did I enjoy it more than season three? And season three, to me overall, I enjoyed it. Like, the, the hype parts were crazy. But season four, as a complete season, worked so well because of season three, which makes it even better. Like, but regardless, you know, we have the beginning of it right where it continues off of the ending of season three where you know a harlequin tamriel somriel oh tamriel there you go so it's not tamriel it's not skyrim but those two angels uh what's her name dang derriere there you go derriere all of them were going elizabeth was going they were fighting maya I, alright, whatever. They, they were fighting Estorosa. And then, on the other side, we have Ludocio, aka Margaret, Estenor, Merlin, Hendrickson, Gil versus Zeldris, Cusack, and Chandler, and all of them. While Bon and. How oh, was this dude's name? Oh my gosh. Alright, Bon and Meliodas are in Purgatory. So all of this stuff is going on. It's actually crazy. So I'm gonna try to like go through it as fast as I can and not go through spoilers, but I'm still gonna go through spoilers regardless. So I'll put it on the title. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, did I do that for the last video? I gotta check. But regardless, so um, in Purgatory, Bond and Meliodas meet up. They meet Hawk's brother, which honestly is so fire. I the fact that he has a brother and he cares so much for him. It makes the scene involving Hawk later on so much better. So much better. But, um, yeah. After that, you know, they basically try to find their way back into the real world. Bringing Meliodas back and all of them. And, and Wild, too, since, like, they're trying to get him to see Hawk again. And they see the Demon King, and now they're boxing him. Meanwhile, on the Angel front, uh, Ludocio and everybody, Merlin and all of them, were boxing Zeldris and Kusak. And all of them, they're, they're boxing, like they're actually fighting. Straight beef on site. Uh, Escanor uses the one again. He's messing people up like crazy. It's all out warfare. Meanwhile, on the other side, we got the main part right now of Esterosa versus everybody. And it's revealed that Esterosa was a part of Gother's plan to stop the Holy War. And it was to turn an angel uh, or an archangel on one side into a demon a aka Mael one of the four archangels the, the strongest archangel they turned him into Asterosa one of the demons basically like implementing fake memories of like oh yeah Asterosa Zeldris and Meliodas are all brothers in reality it's just Asterosa and Zeldris and so this is revealed when like the memories start coming back since Estorosa has become such a big player that like him being there so often makes it like with the memories come back and now Estorosa sheds his shell he becomes Mael the angel but he has commandments and now the goal is to get rid of the commandments and Gother added on another stipulation of trying to sell save Mael and so that's going on. It's crazy. They save him inevitably. And I I already like I, I love Mayo. I think he's so fire. 
actually one of the coolest characters in the show because of his ties to Escanor, how Escanor has his commandment, or not commandment, of power, aka a grace, since it was originally Miles, but Escanor has it, but he's not meant to have it, like, his body can't take the, the grace, he, he's not an angel, and so, Tom, Tomriel and Samriel, they're, they're done, they're cooked, they got by Mael and Derriere sacrificed herself but she met Monspy or she got reunited with Monspy in the afterlife so you know it's, uh, it's somewhat of a bittersweet but happy ending you know it was pretty lit and then on the other side or well actually no uh, now that Mael is like fully like himself and Gother and him settled their beef now they're going together to go stop Cusack, Zeldris and Chandler and all of them so Mael's stuff done and now we go over to them where they're fighting. Um, what's it called? They all show up. And they have Bon. Since he and Meliodas were fighting the Demon King, they're all boxing him still. And they find a way to, what's it called? Uh, get back, which is literally because the Demon King is over the, the entrance. And so. Long story short, since Bond's since Bond has been there for like six thousand years, and so has Meliodas, since time in the demon realm works differently, he's mad strong now. He's been fighting for so long and dealing with like the demons in in purgatory that he's just he's balling now. He's actually Sauce Don McGee. And so now he's not the demon king, but he is strong enough to like help Meliodas contend with him and all that. And so they Wild, aka Hawk's brother, is he he sacrifices himself, or at least like that's what it seems, so they can go through the gate. And then <laughs> the funniest scene happens where they both are going through the gate and they're like, We're gonna reappear in different spots. I'm gonna reappear through Hawk, which is what Bond says, and then Miliodas is like, And I'm gonna reappear in the shell where I was getting all the commandments in Zeldris and his castle in Camelot. And then the Demon King just shows up, he's just like, you're not going anywhere. Puts his hand through the portal, and it grabs one of them, and like, it was crazy. It was actually crazy. Um, what's it called? And so Bond gets through. He, uh, teleports through, uh, Hawk, since Hawk is with, um, Elizabeth and Gother and all of them. Oh yeah, since, uh, Deanne's also there, I forgot to mention that. But yeah, now they're all going over to Lidocio again. But Bon this time is going to the army fighting outside of Camelot since Elaine is there and he's going to go revive her. He goes over there, he gives her his immortality by like, I, I even know, oh I actually know it's because of his power that he gained in Purgatory. He transferred it over to her and now he is an immortal but he's cracked. And now his girlfriend's here so she's not going to die. Reviving her in a sense. But um, what's it called? Now everybody's going over to where Ludosio and all of them are. Ludosio and Cusack fuse. Zeldris is knocked out cold. He's done because him and Eskino were fighting, and now they're they're boxing, right? They're boxing uh, the one true demon and all that. They beat him up, like they actually beat them up completely. But it's too late because while they're trying to stop Meliodas from rev or becoming the Demon King, or at least Meliodas like on the outside, compared to Meliodas' emotions, which is in Purgatory still. Uh, what's it called? Oh, all right, here we go. Um, they're all trying to stop it. And so while that's going on, actually, no, yeah, while all that's going on, the commandments are flying over to Meliodas. And he awakens. He awakens through the shell, and we see somebody who isn't Meliodas, <laughs> like he has the same body, but it's not him, oh man, excuse me, and it's revealed that it's the Demon King, he was, um, since he wanted Meliodas to become the Demon King, quote unquote, Deldris and all of them were helping, but in reality it was more like Meliodas was becoming a vessel, and not the Demon King, and so, the Demon King's in his body, 
and now everybody's there and they're going to box him. So Merlin, Gother, Escanor, ah, uh, <laughs> Escanor, um, Deanne, Elizabeth all go into Meliodas's mind, right? They use Gother's spirit thing where they send their souls into his mind. While Bon, Mael, and Ludosiel are all boxing Demon King, it's crazy. It was actually so fire. Like I can't under I can't state how much I like but like Mael. I already liked La Estorosa before, but Mael is so cool. Like it's crazy. And at the end of the the season, she's me. It's gonna be hard to choose a, an MVP again. It's really gonna be hard to choose an MVP, but I think I got one. Um, what's it called? So yeah, they're all boxing him. Everybody in Meliodas' spirit mind is like, yo. Yeah, I do it. And Meliodas is like, I'ma do it. And so he does it. <laughs> he he boxes the Demon King. He gets him out of his body. And now it's Meliodas again, you know. While Bond is boxing him outside, they, they basically work together to stop him. And now that he's out of Meliodas' body, this is what's it called. They, since Meliodas has the commandments now all in him, he's the new Demon King. And so he claps him, basically. To cut it short, he claps him. And they all celebrate. Everybody's like, oh, lit, let's go. We beat the Demon King. We, we stopped the demonic invasion. Like, this is crazy. And... Oh, man, excuse me. Everybody's celebrating. Everybody's happy, everybody's hype, everybody, or a lot of people, a lot of people died, but you know, at least we did it, you know. Ludociel died, so now it's, on, it's just Mael and the Archangels, he's the only Archangel left, <laughs> since he killed the other two, and Ludociel is dead, like, <laughs> so it's his redemption story at this point. But, because of the Demon King power, Meliodas can't stay in the real world, he can't. It's counteracting with the uh, with Britannia, making like a bunch of catastrophes, like a, a bunch of storms, uh, windstorms, all that stuff, like destroying the planet because he's there. It's it's unbalanced, is what I'm trying to say. And so he has to go back to the demon role. And they're getting ready to go, and something again ridiculous happens. A boulder falls on Elizabeth <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> And then, it was a cliffhanger for one episode, but in reality, the next episode, Merlin saved her. All that, blah, 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 whatever. And we find out that the Demon King's still alive, right? And this is a part where I have a problem with, right? The the Demon King is, is still alive. He didn't die. Like, he didn't revive or anything. It wasn't, like, with Hendrickson or anything like that in Season 1 and 2. But, the Demon King was still alive. And it's shown that Kusag killed Chandler so Zeldris can be used as a vessel instead, becoming the Demon King. But he didn't know that the Demon King was inside of Meliodas. He thought that that was just Meliodas and they were stopping him. And so he kills Chandler so he doesn't interfere. Zeldris becomes the new vessel against his, uh, against his wishes. And now Zeldris is the, um, the host for the Demon King. And now he's opening Purgatory even further since they were Meliodas and Elizabeth were gonna go through that portal that Merlin made. He opened it even further and now a bunch of demons are coming through again. So it's not over, basically. And they go box they, they go to box him, basically. They go to box him. Meliodas has a new vow that he's gonna go save Zeldris. He he neglected his brother for far too long. He disrespected him for far too long. He loves him, you know? since, like, he betrayed him, literally, <laughs> and so, now, I keep saying that so much, <laughs> but regardless, uh, T T Meliodas and Elizabeth go to fight the Demon King, the Sins all go to catch up, Escanor goes to fight, or help Gil Thunder, Griamor, and Hauser, they all go to help him, uh, what's it called, and, yeah, I mean, that's it, <laughs> that I don't think anything else happened. Yeah, nothing else happened. Oh, Hawk went to go get his mom. There you go. <laughs> Alright, 
so yeah, Meliodas and Elizabeth are boxing the Demon King, and it's like it's like the form that Meliodas took when he was the vessel. It's except it's Zeldris now, basically. They're boxing him. They're they're having a good old time. They're just literally fighting. Zeldris can't be breached right now. He's stuck in there. He basically like gave up a little bit. And he's being persuaded by a a Gelda, aka his his wife or not wife, girlfriend who he met in Purgatory, who was a vampire. I actually haven't explained to her yet. Uh, yeah. So Zeldris has a, a girlfriend, Gelda, and Meliodas wanted Zeldris to go leave with him, come with him, since he's leaving with Elizabeth, and they're gonna live a, a peaceful life, you know, having a good time. Zeldris declined because he's he has his duties in Purgatory. He was afraid of his father. And what would happen to, you know, the vampires if he did that? Like, it would be chaos, so we couldn't. And that leads to Zeldris having to kill his, uh, or Gelda's vampire, or vampiric line, you know, everybody there. Except for her and a couple other people. And Meliodas was the one that sealed her away since he knew her. He sealed her away for the day that he could return her to Zeldris. And basically that's it. She's just... The Elizabeth for Zeldris, <laughs> but in a uh, a not so Elizabeth way. <laughs> but yeah, so Meliodas, Elizabeth are trying to get Zeldris out. Uh, the Demon King basically he transforms into his full like vessel form, and now he's even stronger. Then all the Sims show up. Meanwhile, Escanor he's trying to help all of them out. And something crazy happens since it's normal Escanor. Like he can't use his um his grace right now because if he does, he dies. Like oh, excuse me, actually gets clapped. And so he's holding them off because Griamore, Hen or not Hendrickson, Hauser, and Gilthunder can't hold. Like they can't stop this demon. Like they they actually stink, <laughs> but. Escanor's over there, he's taking all of the bruises, the thrashing, and he's telling them to get out of here. But, he's having this mental battle right now, like, what do I do? Do I use my grace? Do I ask my own? And then he's like, my own, please, I need your grace. And he comes down from the heavens and immediately kills the bug. Like, it's crazy, the demon is done. And he's like, I'm sorry, Escanor, I took too long. And he's like, it's, it's alright, I just need your help. He's like, I can't fight in the demon war, you know, this isn't my place. And he's like, it's not for you to fight, it's for me to fight. And then he's like, with my grace, and he's like, yeah. And I was like, you know what will happen if you use it, right? Like, I, I can't allow you to kill yourself. And he's like, I'm not killing myself. I'm just not, it's not suicide. This is a sacrifice to keep everybody here going because of how much they've done for me and how much I need to do for them. And he's like, all right, then your wish is my command, my nigga. And he grabs his arm, and Escanor, the lion in a pride's arm, buffs up, bro. Oh, man, it was crazy. And so now Escanor goes over to the Demon King, and he's like, hey, stupid, look up. And he's like, whoa, what happened? And he's like, it's high noon, my guy. And then he turns into the one. <laughs> and it's wild. They're, they're boxing each other. But Escanor is losing. And one minute passes since the one only lasts for a minute. He, his power doesn't decrease and Meliodas sees what's going on is that oh he's burning up his life force so that he doesn't he doesn't lose his power in fact he gets stronger and so now he understands and everybody knows now everybody's like Escanor please you're killing yourself and he's like I'm doing this alone and then Meliodas is like nah you're not We're, if, if you're gonna sacrifice yourselves for us so we might as well do the same you know and then we see his backstory of like how he met the crew and everybody since he was the last one to join, he uh, his he was outcasted because of his power. He was too strong, you know. And they met the seven deadly sons, or he met the seven deadly sons because he was gonna act, get executed. And Meliodas was like, "All right," or he was gonna get executed by Bartra. And Meliodas was like, "All right." So here's the deal: I'll take them in, and you guys don't kill him. He'll be a part of those seven deadly sons. And so. Meliodas and, and him, they're talking. He he doesn't want to be here because of the fact that he'll hurt them. He'll hurt them to it. What in the world? Thunder, crazy. 
he he's afraid that he'll kill him, hurt them like he did before. And so Meodos is like, all right, try it. And Escanor comes out like the the lion to the pride, and he's like, I told you, I would hurt you. And then he runs away like full on, speeds off to a mountain and starts destroying it until nighttime hits. And then Merlin goes over there, and she's like, all right, well, uh, blah 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 blah, Merlin, you like me. I look like the girl that helped you escape. I love her. I know you love me and all that. Uh, I'm all, uh, I'm exaggerating, but basically she's con consulting him. Or consulting him, I mean. And Escanor's like, yeah, I guess you're right, but I killed them. You know, I killed two of your comrades. And he's like, Melio shows up. He's like, nah, you didn't. Don't worry about it. And then Melio offers a duel to, or not a duel, a sparring match to see can he really handle Escanor. He can because of his demon form. And Askenor, he apologizes. He's like, I'll join the seven deadly sins, but first I must make a request. And he goes back to the the place in season one where you could go talk to the dead for like a couple minutes and all that. He talks to his maid who helped him escape. And he tells her about Merlin, how she looks exactly like her. And how he like, he likes her, but more just because of the fact that like she's her. Not because she looks like the maid and all that. But I'll explain that later. Basically, Escanor is fire. He's dope. Like, there's a lot more to him than just, I'm a strong guy with arrogance and pride. There's a lot more to him. But, yeah. Now, back to the main part. They're boxing the Demon King. They actually clap him up. Meliodas and Gother go to the inside of the Demon King. They get Gelda out. Or they, they bring Gilda in as well since they released her earlier this season and Meliodas and Gother get kicked out because they can't disrupt the, the realm Zeltris has to do it himself but Gilda stays and she didn't do anything she's helping him out giving her reasons to fight and all that and now they're ready you know since Meliodas and her helped them out they they get what's it called they separate Zeldris becomes his normal self again, and now the Demon King has nowhere to go. So, as a last ditch effort, he becomes the Earth itself. <laughs> he becomes the, the very ground that we stand on. And so now, they're fighting the planet. <laughs> and they're like, alright, yeah, this is desperation, we can kill him. It, it, it's over. This dude is a clown, a bozo, even. And that's what they do also, I mean... It's nothing much else to it. <laughs> they, I mean, yeah, where is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay, they do a final combined attack. It's called Nemesis. It's fire. It's dope. But then Meliodas deflects it before it hits the Demon King. He's like, "Oh, I knew you would. What's it called? You would help me out, son." And then he stabs him right in the back. And Meliodas is like, alright, that's all the proof I needed. You're still scum. You can get clapped. And he's full countering the blast of Nemesis that they have. Or their blast that is Nemesis, excuse me. They're countering, full countering it back, making it even stronger. Double times, triple times, or double, quadruple, octuple, all that. And he sends it back. And it didn't destroy the planet. But you know, you would have thought it would have happened because they got sent into the lake. The lady of the lake stopped it from destroying the planet. And now the Demon King is done. He is clapped because Meliodas uses his last remnants of the demon power to st uh, destroy all the commandments so the Demon King doesn't come back. And again, now Meliodas is the new Demon King. He uh, still has his demon powers, but he's not as strong as he was when he was the Demon King. And everybody's good, you know, everybody's lit. Escanor is there, standing there, losing his life. He can't move anymore. And he says his, his confessions to everybody, how he loved everybody in the Seven Deadly Sins. They were all his friends, you know. Giving his regards to Elizabeth, everybody in, in the capital of Leonis. And last but not least, Meliodas and Merlin, he saves them, or he saves them for last and all that saying how Meliodas was his best friend, he helped him out through the thick and thin, and he'll always appreciate it. Like, it was like, mm, Escanor the lion's in a pride, and Escanor the bartender 
were coming through. Like it was both, both of them talking right now, and it was awesome. It was so awesome. And so he saves Merlin for last because he uh, he confesses that he loved her, and she's like, "You, you could never love somebody like me, Escanor." And he's like, "At the very least, even if I was an experiment to you, at least I took up a little bit of your heart. One part of it had me in it." And that's all that matters to a poor soul like me. And Merlin, she, 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 she cracks. Like, she literally cracks. She goes over to him, even though he's a burning inferno. And even though she's going to get scarred. She goes over to him and she kisses him and hugs him. And Escanor fades away. He dies. God rest his soul, God rest Escanor. The man who took on a god. A demon king. Stop. The, the, the destruction of the planet and saved as many people as he could all in one day <laughs> oh man what a what a beast bro what a beast but yeah after that there's still some more left by the way this is only like episode 20 there's still four episodes left so you wonder oh it's not that much is it no it's a lot and you'll see <laughs> you'll see why so all that's going on they're celebrating in Leonis since Deanne and King confessed to each other like yeah let's get married they're, they're getting ready to plan that and all that. Meliodas and Elizabeth don't have to leave for the demon realm because now he's not really a demon king anymore, like at least power-wise. So he can stay. And Merlin, she's sitting there chilling. Deanne comes up to her and she's like, don't you have anything you want to fulfill? Like a goal? Don't you have anything? And she's like, you know what? Since you guys are my friends, I'll let you know. And she teleports them over to where the Lady of the Lake was where they were fighting the Demon King. She brings out Arthur's body from Hawk's mom, who was sitting near the, the lake. And now, we learn more about Arthur and Chaos. So Chaos was a being that created the Demon King and the Goddess, uh, or the Primordial Being, I don't remember what her name is. But yeah, she created both of them. She also created or they also created the four races, humans, fairies, giants, and demons. And, I mean, yeah, now Merlin wants to use chaos to, or put chaos inside of Arthur so she can finally find somebody who loves her. <laughs> Even though Escanor is dead, you know, he's dead, like, he can't come back. So, he, so she's trying to use chaos to fill that void of, like, she loved Meliodas when she was younger because Meliodas helped her out. But as soon as she found out that Elizabeth was like in, in love with him, it was like a Mael situation since Mael was also in love with Elizabeth on the other hand. Uh, Merlin was like, alright, uh, I mean she's a nice person so I'm not going to kill her. Like, I like her a lot actually. But she still felt that, that void that she couldn't fill and that void was filled with knowledge though. And that knowledge was to seek the, the chaos, the chaos, the chaotic being, excuse me. And so she revives Arthur by putting chaos into him. He comes back, he sees Meliodas, he goes crazy. Meliodas is like, I didn't betray you. And then they settle things, they're, they're chilling, they're good. And now, all that's going on, we, we find out that chaos was actually Hawk's mom. Like, I had a feeling, because Hawk's mom was way too powerful to be something normal and big. It was, like, Hawk's mom, the shell, was actually just moss. And Chaos was inside of her. And then we have Kath. Our Arthur's pet cat is actually Kath Palug. Which is, uh, I actually saw her, I remember them in Fate Grand Order since that's foe, which is, you know, fire. But regardless, right? So. Oh, uh, what's it called? Kath comes out, he takes, or he bites Arthur's arm, completely rips it off, his left arm, and he's like, alright, well, Arthur, time to eat you up. And we realize that, oh, Kath is actually an avatar of Chaos, who's here to absorb Chaos's energy, which is in Arthur right now, to become Chaos, like, incarnate, and absorb the world in and of itself. And now all that's going on, Merlin teleports the rest of the sins away, because it's revealed that she was using the sins to get her goal of summoning chaos and putting him in Arthur. And everybody's like, dang, that sucks. 
Gother's the one of the voice of reason, though, looking at both sides, like, why Merlin would do this. And everybody's like, yeah, she, she's our friend, so we're not going to abandon her, but it's just like, dang, she kind of used us. Or at least that like, king is on that side, and Meliodas is like, alright, she needs to take responsibility, let's go back. And so they go over to her, Merlin and Arthur are trying to take on Calf. They all show up, and they're like, alright, so listen, right, or Meliodas is like, alright, you, you, you're taking responsibility for this, so you need to protect Arthur with all of, like, your entire being. And she's like, yeah, don't worry, I was going to do that from the start. And he's like, alright, cool. Then also, we need to take care of, or take responsibility as well, since we let you do this. So, we're going to help her, we're going to help you guys protect each other. And yeah, you know, Seven Deadly Sons rules and all that. Now, they're, they're boxing Kath. And there's this cool scene where, like, they get put into a, a Genjutsu where Meliodas lives his whole life again. But this time, Elizabeth dies and nobody comes to see him. It's a, it's a, like, kind of like melancholic thing, but at the end, Meliodas doesn't fall into despair. He, he realizes that all of his friends are still with him, even if they're not there. And he snaps out of the Genjutsu. Arthur's still awake since he never fell into it. And he's still boxing calf. And everybody else wakes up, and Arthur's like, you know what, nigga, I got an idea. And since calf is talking about eating Arthur to become chaos, Arthur's like, how about I just eat you instead, and then I become chaos and garnet. And so he does it. He he summons a giant, like, being bigger than Kath, eats Ka or eats him, metaphorically, I guess. And now Kath is inside of Arthur, and he has all that power. And Merlin and him are like, all right, let's go rebuild Camelot. <laughs> and they go do that. Like, it's, it was crazy, honestly. I, I love the fact that they brought back Arthur, and that Kath Palug was actually Kath himself. And now we get to see all of the people in Camelot who we thought were dead because of the demon, or the the war, the holy war. And they actually came out like Nanashi was there as well. He was doing all that nasty stuff that that demon that Merlin has helping them out. They're all there. They couldn't save everybody, but Nanashi was actually revealed to be a goddess, one of or one of the goddess race. So he's correct, literally. It was so fire. Oh man, but yeah. So now Arthur and Merlin go rebuild Camelot while everybody else goes to separate. Gother goes on a journey to try and find, you know, what he can do, what he can go, or what, how he can help people, understanding who he really is, like completely. Since he he knows who he is and he found his answers, but not like what he can do after this, you know. Since Gother, like he had some crazy development, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, Elaine and Bon, they're going around the world trying out beer. King gets mad at Bon because, like, why are you just going on a road trip to try beer? And he's just like, don't worry about it. I'm lit. <laughs> and De Deanne, Harlequin, they, they're getting ready to go get married, so they're going to invite everybody. We didn't get to see the wedding. <laughs> Sucks, but, you know, whatever. And Elizabeth, Meliodas, they get married, and now we see a time skip. 1.5 or a year and a half later we know that they're pregnant Elaine is pregnant uh, Meliodas is pregnant or excuse me Elizabeth is pregnant <laughs> and Deanne and Harlequin are also having a baby then we skip another uh, or nine years later and we see the the child that Meliodas has Tristan running around and he's like I'm gonna defeat the seven deadly since they're gonna take my, my my father and all that and he goes to the the castle and he sees them all the seven deadly sins except for Eskimo soul and Merlin and they're like oh yeah with the big bad seven deadly sins we're gonna take over the kingdom huh? <laughs> and then <laughs> they're all they're like oh look at him he's so cute and they go outside to see the celebration not for the seven deadly sins but for Tristan's birthday and Tristan's like, wait, I thought my dad was evil. And he Bond's like, kid, if your dad was evil, why would they be celebrating him like this? He's not evil at all. <laughs> he's one of the people who helped save the kingdom. He's like, what? But nobody told me this. And he's like, yeah, because he chose not to. <laughs> and now at the end, the very final scene, we see Meliodas, Elizabeth, and Tristan. They're all eating lunch. And then Meliodas is like, all right. What do you want to be when you grow up, Tristan? You don't have to be the king. I'm not going to force you into that, but what's, what's your desire? And he's like, you know what? I don't think I want to be a holy knight. 
I want to be one of the seven deadly sins, and that's where it ends. That's where the force, or, or I guess five season, whatever, five seasons sh series, seven deadly sins, ends, or at least until the movie, which I'm probably gonna watch. I don't, I don't know whether I watch it today or not. Who knows? But that's that. That's really it. My thoughts. Um, this is crazy. This is literally crazy. There was so much into this season that like, I wish that it was longer. So they could have full, more time to flesh out some things. There was so much jam packed into this, like it was nutty. Like the Merlin stuff, the the Demon King coming back. I wish we got to see more people in the end. Like we didn't get to see Merlin or Arthur at all. We didn't get to see anybody except like the people in Leonis, you know. We got to see the Sins, but we didn't. Like again, we didn't get to see Merlin. <laughs> we got to see a bunch of cool people. We got to see Sir Death Pierce now. He's gonna start his own kingdom. Because he doesn't want to be ruled over by a demon and a goddess. Uh, Bartra is picking out toys for his grandchildren. Since Margaret and Gilthunder are having a lit time. Griamore and Veronica are having a lit time. It's it's fire, honestly. It's fire. And so now, with all that going on, Dreyfus and Hendrickson... Or Dreyfus became a, a, a sword master while... Hendrickson started up his own, like, I guess, herbal shop, like, to heal people. And the rest of it's just, you know, small stuff. The show, overall, it was, like, it sucks, right? Because of the fact that the animation was crazy in the first two seasons, but the story wasn't too crazy. Like, the second season was 100% the better story out of the two, of the first and second season. But it didn't matter because the, the animation carried, like, it was so fire. The animation was amazing. And then season three and four happened, and the story is like, alright, you, you remember the story from season one and two? Forget all of that, we're clutch. And they, they go crazy from start to finish. While on the other hand, the animation studio changes, so now the animation looks even worse. And I was just like, oh, but, so why can't we just have both? <laughs> like, why why that have to happen? That sucks. So it's like you get one or the other, but at the very least, the 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 or the story finished with a good ending. Like, it, like if it finished with bad um, story but good animation, then it wouldn't like I wouldn't have been as entertained as I was now. Cause I could get through the animation because the story was well enough or good enough to deserve it, you know, like deserve my attention. But at the end of the day, it really does suck that like. It couldn't be both because we could have had a real like at the very least like a very very memorable one. Because it sucks to see the show go out like the way it did, with the impression that it left in season three. And I'm again, I'm no saint. I uh, I thought the same thing. I was like, I don't think the show is trash, but I did not like season three, or at least like the first two episodes. So I'm not gonna watch it, you know. But off of the good things that I heard from my friends and all that, I decided to give it another chance, and I'm glad I did. Honestly, it's just again, it sucks that it had to happen like that for the show, you know, with the way it started, with how the Esnor Meliodas fight escalated how the band animation just kept getting ragdoll like you you really hate to see it you know you really do hate to see it but enough about that you know like at the end of the day the show to me turned out great i'd say seven deadly sins at its worst like season four was a seven at its best it was an eight and overall the show i would say it's a seven and a half to an eight like overall it's a good show like if you want to get into uh anime honestly if you want to get into anime, you should you should get into this show. Or if you just want a good fun story with some crazy revelations, good twists, and good character development. Or at least decent character development, depending on who you look at. Then you should get into this show. You know, I, I recommend it. I, I can't recommend it enough. And now for the, the character development. Gother's character development was crazy. So was Escanor's. Like... Going from a doll who was really, really weird and couldn't understand human emotions, so he would do wrong things to understand them, to being the most understanding out of, like, the irony in Gother being the one to understand Merlin out of all people is hilarious now that I notice that, like, because of what he used to be beforehand. Going from Deanne telling him that it's okay with Naja and all that, to being the one to understand Merlin in the end. Like, it's crazy. 
so his his development he, like he's a different person at this point he he's awesome i love the fact that they did that with gother because in, in the beginning you you don't like gother much because of how like how sinister he can really be sometimes but yeah you know like gother they 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 did him right Es or Eskinor, I'll save him for last. Uh, or at least second to last. Bon, or not Bon. King and Deanne, Harlequin and Deanne, whichever. Their, their, their development happened mostly in like season 3. But it's it's nice seeing how it turned out. Because they both got their memories back. They both remember that they love each other. And they both turned out well. You know, nobody died on their on their part. And they're the king and the king of the fairies. And the queen of the giant race, you know. Like it's it's always nice to see that, because of the fact that you ship them, you really do. Like, you you were thinking like, oh maybe Dan was gonna give a Hauser or something. No, it's Harlequin, <laughs> and it it just turned out so well for them, you know, especially with Galaxenia and Jerol, and how much of an influence they had on both of them. But yeah, uh, Bon, his character development was crazy, but it happened mostly in like Purgatory. He he changed like he he became crazy. Or not even like character development, more like he's just he's not even a thief to steal other people's goods, it's more like a thief to steal what's his. Like to get everything back, to get Elaine back, to get his captain back, to get his people back, you know, like it's to help people, it's not to it's not for his own benefit anymore. So you know. I also like that. Then you have <laughs> Hawk. <laughs> he uh <laughs> Hawk, Hawk was Hawk, you know. He, the the scene at the end where his brother and him meet up in purgatory it was really heartwarming and seeing the scene where hawk and or hawk was sung to by Meliodas and bon the the song that wild was singing to him as a baby it really got me tearing up honestly it was so sad because at that point we thought he was dead but lo and behold he wasn't but just overall just seeing them go together meet together it was it was awesome i loved it um, Merlin, seeing that there's more to her than just being a strong mage is pretty cool at the end. I wish we got more of it during the whole series, or at least like sprinkled in. But I like the fact, it, it also makes sense because of the fact that Merlin, or Deanne says it herself, like Merlin let everybody get their goals achieved first. Like with Bon reviving Elaine, Meliota saving Elizabeth, Escanor s sacrificing himself, Deanne and King marrying each other, Gother just being Gother, <laughs> like, she let everybody get their goals in reach first before she activated her plan, and she integrated that into her plan as well, like, getting everybody there first, while also moving forward to her plan, which is, like, a good and a bad thing, she manipulated them, but she also saved them, like, it wasn't purely, like, it wasn't cruel, it was messed up, but, it, like, she, at the end of the day, she's still her, their friends, right, like, she didn't do it out of malice. But yeah, you know, Merlin, I wish we got more of her, but at the same time, it makes sense why we didn't get more of her until the end. And Escanor, Escanor was crazy. Escanor's character development by far was the best in, like, The Sims, besides, like, maybe Meliodas or something. Escanor, like, honestly, before he was my favorite character because of the... Um, his power, just how drippy he was, how cool he was. Now he's my favorite character because of everything that we saw about him. Like, I liked both sides of Escanor, and now I only see Escanor as one being. A prideful, poetic man. And it, it, it's just crazy, man. God rest his soul, Escanor didn't deserve what he got. But, man, will he be a hero who lives on in infamy. He's crazy. Uh, Meliodas, you know. He, he definitely did his part. He was crazy he helped Zeldris he helped himself his teammates helped him like it's uh the character living by his rules living his life in the way that he wants to live it and getting rewarded for it for being consistent right not switching sides staying loyal to his people trying to repair bridges with his family and his brother trying to help people not going on a violence first action like it Meliodas by far was the most consistent character and that's literally the only reason he would deviate was because of the fact that his emotions and his body were separated so it's not even his fault you know Meliodas changed and he he stayed like that for the rest of the series from going from a merciless killer who only followed his diet's orders to being the Meliodas that we know now a kind 
forgiving, understanding, and cool guy. Um, Elizabeth, on the other hand, we barely saw her. Like, <laughs> we, we got her development in season three, and then after that, she wasn't Elizabeth from season one, where she was like, Meliodas, sir, and all that, calling out to him every time. She, she could do something. She could actually do something. She wasn't useless. But her character development was done, so now it's just basically like living to see the end of the story to live with Meliodas, you know? Elizabeth is a completely different character from how she was in season one. A completely different character. All the all the pervert jokes that Meliodas had with them with her are gone in season three and four. Well, almost gone. So it really shows the the growth and all that, you know? Like I, it's sick honestly, it's just dope. At the end of the day, this show left me with a lot to think about, like, how, how different it was from season one, like, the characters really changed, everybody really changed. If you were a main character, the, even Zeldris, like, Zeldris going from the guy that he was to who he is now, like, he, he's been like that, but he couldn't be like that because of who he was, like, in, in his role as a leader of the Ten Commandments. But now that he now that he has his girlfriend and all of them, like he's he's him, he's himself. And now he gets to live with his girlfriend or vampire golf chick, you know? He he's lit, he got the best ending. And I think everybody except for Escanor, or actually not even Escanor got his ending too. It wasn't the best one, but he got a good ending. Everybody got done right, you know? And at the end of the day that's what I'm happy for, honestly. I I'm glad that I watched this show. It gets me emotional, honestly, just talking about it, like, dang, it's really over. I've watched all four seasons of Seven Deadly Sins, and I'm not disgusted with, my, with what I watched. Like, sure, the animation was bad, but I just found it more funny and just like, all right, whatever. It's, I, there's promise that it's going to get better, so I'm not going to harp on it, you know? And if I were to harp on it, like, it's whatever. I don't know the circumstance in the studio, what was going on, but although it wasn't good looking... At the very least, what it was trying to tell was good enough to carry it. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters to me, which is why I was able to finish it. But yeah, Seven Deadly Sins, Dragon's Judgment, Seven Deadly Sins, the entire series, all four, excuse me, all five seasons, they're done in the history books. I've seen them all, and I've documented it on YouTube. I'm, I'm glad you guys were able to join me on this journey. Hopefully soon I'll be able to like start Bleach or restart Bleach since uh, that's coming out soon. Hopefully I'll be able to continue One Piece since I haven't finished it yet. Like or at least like on YouTube I haven't finished it yet. I'm already caught up. Like so I just need to document it on YouTube and all that in my experience. But you know that that'll come when that comes. You know. But as of right now, Seven Deadly Sins. I can close the book on this. I I'll I'll watch the movie at some point. I'll, I'll, I'll document it, you know, I'll give my opinions on it, but Seven Deadly Sims, the end of the series, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, you know, a 7 or 8 out of 10, that's, that's what I'm giving you right now, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this series too, I hope you guys can come back for whatever I talk about next, or even for the games that I play, I hope you guys stay safe during the holidays, whatever you celebrate, you know, I hope you have a great time with your family, or at least with your friends, or even yourself, staying safe through you during these trying hard times, and yeah, I think that will be all for me for now, I'm Infamous Isaac, hope you guys enjoy, hopefully whoever's watching this can leave a comment, tell me how they feel about the series, and if not, then I, I, at the least I hope you enjoy, and yeah, I'll see y'all later, check y'all out, peace.